Over the course of the history of emotion, many tales have been told, but no tale may ever surpass the breathless legend of Mike the Messiah. His name echoing through every single corner of the multiverse. Who was he? And what is the purpose and meaning of all this respect laid down at his feet? Here, in a shrine carved of marble stone, lying somewhere between the realm of men and the realm of gods, lies a great shrine to his legacy and what he did and why he is held in such great esteem. Greetings folks, the man here and welcome back to 100 Days in Alex's Mobs. Now in the last episode we showed the ender dragon what we're made of. And while looking for stuff to put up the ender dragon egg, I found a couple wither skeleton skulls and right then and there realized what this video is gonna be about. But before wither stuff I had to clear out this little house in order to make space for a trophy room. Obviously had to rip out the floors, can't have wood from my own dimension in my trophy room. Put down the weird purple poi stuff. I know, it, it looks nice and endery, and since I'm gonna have end stuff in there, it's appropriate too! But just when I was trying to masquerade two marble stairs as two marble blocks behind this hay over here, some... some real weird happened. The time has come, I cannot wait any longer to make this decision of utmost importance should I take the journey of 10,000 miles to explore the universe in the end discovering only myself or shall I stay with my friend? I must go. I am crushed. Well that was... that was something. Now here is the reason it takes so much time to do these videos, it's stuff like this I do. Here's the thing, I tossed out the old podium because I wanted the correct podium or whatever it is for the dragon egg. Look at the amount of work I went through to place down the exact same block. But time wasted or time well spent, you tell me, it doesn't matter because I had fun anyways. <laughs> now it's time to do wither stuff, starting with chopping down some trees. Also, really quick, here's an update on Perry the Platypus. I know you love him. Here he is, just swimming around. Still swimming around. I might have put too much of him in this video. I'm just kidding. There's no such thing as too much Perry the Platypus. I mean, come on. Then I don't know what went wrong, lads. This, this bloody golem attacked me and smashed my head in. And so now there's two extra red flowers outside the Temple of Mike. But then I realized, hey, I have end stuff. So I decided to do end stuff for a bit. I basically put down all my end stone and those little poise things and all the different shrubbery I got from the end. And I just decided to make a garden. It was gonna be a farm, but then I realized I need those little creatures, those little bugs that attacked me. So that's gonna have to wait till, till next time. <laughs> now we're finally back on track doing wither stuff. I went to the nether and immediately spotted this giant thing just bobbing on lava. I took it out with a bow because, I mean, who does that? Who? I, am I gonna f go fight that thing? It's horrifying. Only a lunatic would do that. And then I fought some ghosts. Oh yeah, that sounds insane, but yes, there were ghosts. And I had to fight ghosts in hand-to-hand -hand combat. It was, yes, traumatizing and confusing. I don't know how you defeat a ghost in hand-to-hand -hand combat. But regardless, I found this soul sand flavored jungle temple. It, w it was pretty good, it, it came in a real clutch later, you'll see. Now, to be fair, I was kinda going into this unprepared. I did not have looting on my sword, which is gonna be a big problem, but I found a looting stone sword, so I was like, hey, this may or may not come in handy, so I just took it along with me. In a few moments, I had found another fortress, quickly jumped in and started getting bullied by the blazes. But that's that's just kind of standard, isn't it? it everyone, uh, everyone has that happen to them at some point in time or the other. 
Now it's time to do the tough bit, to siege the fortress and keep hunting wither skeletons until one drops a skull. This is a process guys, this is quite the process. I've had to do it multiple times in previous survival worlds. Never fun, never fun. I quickly put down these little roof thingies so that I could hit them but they couldn't hit me. And then I found one and it started chasing after me, I realized the roof was too high. So I quickly put down the blocks and trapped him, trapped him well this time and started hacking away at him. By no doubt this was to be first of many skeletons that I would slay and... First try! First try! We never lose! It, it, it is not possible. It is not in the realm of possibility. This is... If you have a bottle of something that's fizzy, get it out of the fridge, shake it, and just shoot it directly at the sky right now, because this is... Oh! Ah! It, I cannot believe this. But now it's time to fight the wither, which is the bad, which is the bad news. <laughs> Each time in life when I am at a crossroad, I take inspiration from Mother Nature. And what better creature to take inspiration from than the most magnificent sons and daughters of Mother Nature, the moles. So I dig down into the earth so that the wither is completely unable to move and I can maneuver myself through the manure like the magnificent, powerful mole. You know how nervous I was? I had all my best stuff on me. Here's the thing, this series is really, really cool. But I haven't spent much time grinding and getting cool stuff. I have wasted, well, I guess not wasted, but I have spent a lot of time in the things that are kind of not important. But regardless, it was time and the beast was summoned. I had set the wither loose on this world. Well, I guess not loose, I kind of like shoved him into a ditch really, but then again, Mole warfare was working beautifully. I wasn't getting hit by the wither effect, there wasn't any explosion, it was just just the best tactic one has ever come up with. Let me tell you a story here, right? Let me just tell you a story between this epic battle. I had a survival world once, and I summoned the wither on the surface, and it got so out of control it wasn't even near my house. But the thing is, it just attacks all the mobs and it flies away. And here it couldn't do that, so I could just take my axe to its toes, or I guess weird ribcage, tailbone bit, and just keep smacking it until it was in its second form, and it came down, and then I fought it like a man. The bits of the enchanted golden apple still lodged into my teeth, I had finally taken it down and defeated the second boss of Minecraft. I returned home triumphant and gave a big stretch. Now it was time to craft the big shiny block, the beacon itself. So I gathered up, you know, you know what the appropriate block is for this, Mike's gold, the best, the only, the holy, gathered it all up, made a little beacon behind the temple, kind of wanted to put it in the temple, but the temple's not really centered, and I don't want to rip it down because I think that would be sacrilegious. <laughs> so, so I built the beacon behind it and shot it into space. Activated it and I chose swiftness because I just wanted a pep in my step so that I could bounce around my house real easy. It's just, it's, it's fantastic. Okay, regen is pretty good, but come on. Come on, it's so fun. It's so fun. Speed is so fun. I like being speedy. I like being like the Flash. And what could be more appropriate than to put a little bit of yellow glass on top of the beacon just to give it that little mic spin and make it all thematic and stuff. And then I prayed.
Please, tell me your story. Courage, selflessness, and bravery. These are the virtues of the righteous man. I put the needs of those who would not defend themselves before the needs of my own self. And when the waves brought an invasion to our shores, I did not hesitate to venture into the depths to retrieve material, protect them once again at any cost. And then I was betrayed by those who I thought were my deities. I was left, my blood and wine, to the ocean waves to return as the enemies who had struck me down. And then I decided I would never let the virtues of a righteous man go unrewarded in my kingdom. Well, that was... that was really something, wasn't it? It's not every day you come in contact with... whatever I had just come in contact with. And... I don't know what to say. I kinda know where he comes from now. He, he really skipped out on some of the details. I mean, I know I have to be brave and stuff now, but... but he never showed me his real face. What What does his real face look like? This is unacceptable. Please, please, I need to know. I need to know what his real face looks like. This is... I can't end the video like this. This is... I need, I need more prophecies to happen. I cannot end it like this. But I think this is quite cathartic. And I think this is also a good time to remind all of you of something that will be happening in the final 10th episode of this series. An invasion will come. The pillagers are coming for New Greece. And it is my duty, in the next episode, to put the freedom of those who cannot defend themselves before me and fight for New Greece. <laughs>